Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV, it's me Paul and I'm here to speak about Republic of Ireland versus Hungary. Obviously we know we have a big game, well it's big for John O'Shea and his staff against Hungary tomorrow. It's a warm up game for the Euro 2024 qualifiers for Hungary. Um, there's a little bit of needle to this with Sam Smodox, obviously having the Hungarian kind of um, crossover there with obviously the fact that it came out earlier in the season that they were looking to basically pinch him off Ireland he's came out and said it's nonsense so um he also said he came out and he, he, he didn't understand why basically um it was being put out there when he'd never had any ambition to play for Hungary it was always Ireland in his eyes um so yeah look Sammy's obviously coming in to this game after his best season ever and um, we've a lot of Irish strikers coming into this in really good veins of form Troy Parrott just finished uh, off a, a good season for him personally, maybe not so much for his club, Excelsior Rotterdam, as they got relegated. Um, and he did score a hat-trick um, in the relegation playoff as well. And he scored two hat-tricks in two games um, towards the end of the season. So he would be flying uh, in terms of his form. Adam Eda scoring the winner in the Scottish Cup final against Rangers, which was obviously huge at the time. And it looks as though Celtic are trying to work out a permanent transfer for him there. Mikey Johnson had a good end to the season at uh, West Brom on loan from Celtic. He did win the Championship Player of the Month. It did dry up a little bit towards the end, but it was a good end to the season for him. Michael Obafemi, um, he finished the season okay at Millwall, um, will be looking to probably get himself back in the Irish team. And Tom Cannon as well will have a point to prove uh, to fans maybe who doubted him and obviously looking to try and stake a, claim, uh, stake a claim for the squad for the games in September. So, look, if we can manage to get some of our key players uh, involved, especially our strikers and stuff like that, we could definitely go into this game against Hungary and be positive. I think, look, we, we're obviously missing Gavin Bazunu, Andrew Omabamadeli, uh, and a couple of others. But we've got experience mixed in there with uh, with the youth. I do think Jake O'Brien deserves a shout, and, and I'd love to see him start um, in place of Andrew Omabamadeli. Obviously, we know Jake can play kind of two ways, physical or, or and with the ball. He's quite good at starting attacks and stuff like that. And I hope John O'Shea will utilise that. Obviously, we know Seamus Coleman will likely start as uh, right wing back. And then, you know, you've got players like Shane Duffy in there and Matt Doherty as well, who I'm sure John O'Shea will be using to kind of, and, and then the Stevens as well, who John O'Shea I'm sure will be using to kind of mix him with the young lads as well, because all our strikers are basically all young lads except for Sammy. Um, I personally would go with a two up top with maybe Adam Eda and Sammy Smodox and see how they link up together. I know um, he did that kind of with Evan and had, you know, Sammy as like a, a centre forward or shadow striker, if you're rather. So I do think that this is a game where we should be looking at, at, at kind of capitalising, using Adam Eda as a focal point and getting ourselves high up the pitch and having Sammy Smodox not too far away from Adam and also getting in behind. So if Adam's dropping deep, get Sammy in behind. Um, we're obviously missing Chidozi. But I think players like Mikey Johnson and stuff like that have a role to um, to unlock the defence as well. Um, and don't forget we'd have players like Jason Knight and stuff like that who would provide the energy in the middle as well. So I think we're going into this from an Irish point of view um, in really good form. It's definitely up front. And I'd like to imagine that we might score a couple of goals. Hungary on the other, on the other hand, sorry, they have qualified for the Euro 2024 qualifiers. Um, in qualifying... Um, they won five, they drew three and lost zero. They're on a 14-match unbeaten streak, and I don't think you'd do that unless you're an actual good organised side. Um, they scored 16 goals in qualifying. Uh, they conceded seven. They've three clean sheets. Um, they had 55.75 possession over the course of their uh, qualifying campaign, and their passing accuracy was 82.75%. Two red cards and 20 yellow cards. But I do think... That uh, you look kind of from their point of view, they are going to be a threat. Um, like Switzerland, you would not uh, overlook them. They've got big wins there against the a two one win away to Serbia, a two one home win against Serbia as well. Um, a couple of other, uh, you know, they beat Montenegro as well, and their first game will be against uh, Switzerland, who we obviously played. So obviously, this is a World Cup warm up game for them, and I don't think it's going to be as important for them as it is for us because we're using this game essentially as a warm up game for September, but also 
the fact is if we get a result, the likelihood is John O'Shea will get the Ireland job. And I think we can all agree on that, unless they're still aiming to get Willie Sagnall at Georgia. But I do think that if we come out of this without two hidings and get two resu- uh, two good results, maybe a draw and a win, maybe a win against Hungary and then a draw against Portugal or something like that, then I think there is an actual claim to give John the job. But again, look, we're not... we're we're only speculating here there's, there's no guarantees i just think that hung, hungary might be a surprise package for us tomorrow and i think that they might uh, uh, come on to us um a bit like switzerland did and maybe shock us so I, I do think switzerland are a decent side anyway so i wasn't really um i was expecting them to kind of give us a good game or you know definitely have us struggling a little bit they seem to have our number over the years and i, I just hope it's not the case with hungary i'm going to go through some of their key players um you know they have the lad Milos Kirkes at Bournemouth and he seems to be a very good player Seamus Coleman name checked him in his press conference earlier today as well and saying that he was uh, he was a tough player to come up against uh, obviously you know Dominic Sabazloy and um, Sabazloy he is obviously their star man he has the free role and he's their captain and he seems to be the one that they pin all their hopes on. Uh, probably like Liverpool did kind of earlier on this season. And I don't think he's lived up to expectation. But I do think over time he will be a really, really top level player. And I do think for Hungary, he will be their main man. But I do think in terms of the Premier League, that's the two kind of key players they have there. I mean, you know, Kirk, is, he's valued at 20 million on um, transfer market. So he seems to be the second kind of... Uh, most valued player and then they got a lot like, Willie Orban um, at centre back there he's at Leipzig as well and he's 10 million so he, he's kind of the next um, player after that and then you've got Galazzi as well in goal um, <clears throat> so you, you know they've got a couple of uh, decent players as standout players I wonder if they'll have some players that might stand out during the course of the Euros that over these games that we might see but I do think look going into this game that this is a game that if Ireland are organised and they can manage to create chances like they did against the Belgium game, and I do think that that Belgium side that we face that day will be kind of similar stature to uh, the Hungary side that we will face tomorrow. I do think that this is a game we can win. I do think if we take it serious, but I do think that John should be looking to win the game in the first kind of 60, 70 minutes and then start giving lads a run. Um or not even giving the lads a run, bringing players on to try and change the game or change the impact of the game or add more goals instead of just hanging on. For, like, if we're winning 1-0, we shouldn't just hang on to win 1-0 just for the sake of saying, oh, we've got to win. We should try and go and win 2-0 or 3-0, I think, it's especially since it's a friendly. They'll be just looking to get match sharpness and match fitness into their players. They won't care about the result. So that's just my take on it. I'd love to know what you guys think... Um, of this preview and uh, how are you feeling are you going to the game is there a little bit of a lull this week uh, is, is is it a bit of a dead game how are you, how are you guys feeling are these june fixtures a little bit pointless i'm starting to think they are i love the international break but i just i'm not seeing much value in uh in not giving the lads a break after they finish finish their season it's great now i love obviously the Ireland games and stuff like that but it is a bit much in my opinion i think once they finish the season they should get a break um, you know, and, and, and just be able to relax. They'll only get like two weeks off now once they finish this international break. And I, I, I love the fact that so many of them come in and they, rep, they represent their country and they're so proud to represent their country. I think it's great to see. Anyway, there's lots of content on our channel from press conferences and so on. I'm going to jump off before I start sneezing. Let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll speak to you all soon. Drop a thumbs up on the video and I'll speak to you all soon. Take care.